Yay! <laughs> Welcome to Might Be Awesome. My name is Sam Basher. I'm DJ Wildridge. And thank you, Trisha Hirschberger, for joining us. Thank you for having me here. I love talking thrones with some cool peeps. Well, this is a cool time. Season 8, episode 1 has premiered. We watched it last night. If you're part of the Patreon, hey, salute to you guys. See you guys and gals. Thanks for joining us for our live watch long. Yeah, you got to watch it with us, which was, was a lot of fun. That was a blast. And we're going to be doing our full review and breakdown of the first episode of season 8. This is exciting times. Only a few episodes has, uh, left, gang. This is like our Super Bowl, except for our last couple of days. It's more like <laughs> the World Cup. I've never watched the whole thing of that, but it's kind of like that. It's like Major League Baseball, you know, with the games. Games. (laughs) Oh, man, I'm super excited. Uh, And this is going to be a blast. Also, we're going to be answering your questions over on Patreon, and you can get all this stuff early if you join us at patreon.com slash only see what answers, which you can find in the corner of these videos if you want to go over there. Uh, Maud Garrett's joining us this week, and there'll be a clip of her interview later in this episode. But really quick, let's get some business done up top before we get into the review. This is Season 8, Episode 1. Titled Winterfeld, and here's your quickie synopsis. Not so quick. John and Daenerys have a cold reception in Winterfeld. Oh, John zing. meets his brother and sisters and rides the dragons with Daenerys. That was my. That was a really cool moment. Then she discloses to Sam the fate of his father and brother. When John meets Sam, he discloses who his parents are. And during this, Euron Greyjoy meets Cersei to collect his uh, uh, recompense. Thank you for joining to joining to her army. Theon rescues his sister Yara and decides to go to Winterfell. And Jaime arrives to Winterfell and sees Bran in a great what will moment. (laughs) Awkward. How's that going to boil over in the next episode of Game of Thrones? But kicking it off, Trisha, you watched this episode last night. How Mm -hmm. did you feel throughout and after? Overall thoughts. Uh, I was a little bit of a roller coaster throughout, as I think most people were, but ultimately I really liked the parallels between season one, episode one, oh, and yeah. season eight, episode one. I thought mm-hmm. they did that beautifully. I thought there was a lot of really strong emotional scenes, um, and this was definitely a more exposition-heavy episode oh, yes. rather than action, but I think we needed it, and I think we were all very excited to see that Winterfell Stark reunion, what's going to happen when Daenerys gets there, etc. You guys? Yeah. Oh, yes. It was a, a beautiful... I, I, honestly, I... When we did our full watch along like two years ago and I got I got caught up, I finally like realized halfway through that full watch through, uh, my feelings are now invested in all these characters yeah. and I care. So like you said, like when you see uh, Arya like letting the kid go by to go up into the tree to like watch like the same way she did. And in the after show when they were like bringing that up, that like comparison, it's just weird that like, yeah, she was a full child during yeah. that part of the show and now she's an adult and yep. seeing how everyone's coming together and... Um, uh, Hat off to Samwell because he gave a <laughs> ooh he gave a that was a real heck of a performance there gang that was a that was that one hurt that John, one hurt John my soul Bradley right that's, yeah. that's that actor's name mm-hmm. yeah. oh my god he was so good it was so it was an amazing performance and uh, Jamie uh, but you're in for it dude yeah. <laughs> it's a bad time to be Jamie up in Lance uh, waiting up in for Winterfell. an old friend mm-hmm. and what's uh, a weird way of distinguishing their relationship I think at best Jamie's an acquaintance. Uh, an may- old friend. I mean, maybe a friend makes a large impact on your life, uh, and yeah. I would argue that Jamie's had a large impact on Bran's uh, life. Uh, Jamie caused a large impact in yeah. Bran's life. Uh, I, uh, but uh, the episode <laughs> begins with, like you guys were saying, homage is back to the original episode mm-hmm. with Danny marching in, Danny and John and that whole uh, squad marching into uh, Winterfell. And I liked that uh, immediately, because one of the aspects I like about this show is the more grounded elements within the fantasy. And I like immediately Sansa's like, yeah, cool. Greatest army in the world. How are we going to feed them? Uh, because winter's coming mm-hmm. and uh, they all need to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, we don't know what a dragon's eat. We have yeah, no exactly. idea. Oh, nice thing from Danny. Mm-hmm. Whatever they want. Uh, I do like, I like that the tension here feels organic and it, it's just one more hurdle everybody needs to clear before like, listen. and it's, it's easy to for the audience to be like yeah y'all need to lock your shit up because mm-hmm. bad stuff is coming you know what I mean but for Sansa for Sansa is still an idea for characters like Sansa and even Tyrion because he he saw the thing the one they brought back but like if you're not John or that crew that he went up, up right. beyond the wall with or even Danny at this point you don't really know right it's like uh, we live in California talking about uh, the big one or whatever like for most of if most of us it's an idea mm-hmm. but like if you're one of the scientists to study it, it's not an idea and everybody should get their act together you know what i mean and so they're john and danny and the rest of them are like that it's like hey let's get it 
forget all this stuff because we've got bigger problems to deal with. It also gave us one of uh, just talking about big moments that I uh, unbelievably fell in love with is uh, POV riding of dragons because I feel like it's always been like side shot, maybe saddle, like her getting on top. You know, yeah. like we're not really sure. Like, you, I mean, you you get it. You get the gist. It looks beautiful. You're impressed. But you got like point of view flying, and I'm like, oh my god, this is the best like roller coaster ride I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. By the way, wouldn't be the worst thing. Wouldn't be the worst. That's thing. exactly yeah. what I thought. I was thinking like Wizarding World of Harry Potter, yeah. Hogwarts castle kind of style ride um and i also thought how terrifying yeah like if you were john in that moment yeah total pants crapping yeah. oh yeah total pants. and understandable sure. honestly yeah. like i i, I would have encouraged it yeah it's interesting that was like the big because you talked about it being more of an expositional episode and i think that was the kind of the big raw moment like the big like uh spectacle moment but i this I like these episodes of Game of Thrones because I like the just bouncing these characters that we've been spent so long with off of each other, and especially with like you've got characters like Tyrion who is reuniting with uh, Sansa for the first oh time God, in yeah. years, and you realize how long uh, it's been since a lot of these characters have met each other, and and also how many people Arya's bumped into in her travels. Like I think she's the best connected out of everybody. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was very satisfying as an audience member to see the characters filled in on information we've already been sitting with for yeah. a long time because it really propels the action forward once we're all on the same page. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was uh, especially want to give props to Sansa because like you were mentioning before we started recording that people still like rag on her. There's but a lot like, of Sansa hate online still. There's so She's been through so much. <laughs> well, and so she's much. so smart. Like, I loved when Arya said she's the smartest person I know. Because yeah. I was like, yes, hit that home because yeah. that's so true. Mm-hmm. And she's even uh, given some Tyrion some insight of, like, wait, you believe so? I love that, that she called out Tyrion, yeah. too. Like, I used to think you were the smartest person, and I cannot believe you believe her BS. It was mm-hmm. also interesting to see the Stark kids, how they've grown, because I think in our watch along, we all. Uh, pointed out how similar John was acting to Ned almost to the point where I kind of felt like they gave him episodes from season one and be like this is watch Sean being this is who you are now right but Sansa also reminded me a lot of Cersei she had a lot of like uh moments that were very like the passive aggressiveness the little petty passive aggressiveness it's like oh she's channeling Cersei hard right now Mm -hmm. but hey I I'm more on board with this This (laughs) I mean Cersei played for a while at least played the game very well and arguably still is well arguably because uh she's so alone at this point that she looks back at your own with like Fine. And he gets excited about it. You know you're dealing with a dirt bag when he sees that like doomed resignation. He's like, Yeah, I made it. <laughs> this well, is my window. I mean he said to Yara, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go stoop the queen now. Yeah. Like that was his goal going in. I don't think he cared how that happened. You That's, gotta that respect the, the dude who's guy's goal oriented. He got he got uh, the golden company to come back. Yeah. I mean you can, but yeah. you know, found one positive there. Okay, so if we're gonna talk <laughs> about that moment though, mm-hmm. do we think that happened? so that she has a legitimate heir. So if Cersei's actually pregnant, mm-hmm. instead of saying it's her brother who she's not married to, so that would be illegitimate, yeah. she could at some point marry Euron, say it's Euron's, and then have a legitimate heir to the Iron Throne. Yeah, yeah we're getting those so. vibes. Getting those yeah. vibes around. Because why else would she have gone for that? Well, and also she's... The only she, other guy there is the mountain and then Kyburn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think everyone else and is... That, uh, I mean, person, she went for Lancel before, so like, bar's pretty low, yeah, but he only, was related and she's into that. The only person in the Kyburn is that one prostitute that's going to unfortunately die from pox, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I like that Bronn's like, wait, which, which, which one? Wait, which, which one? Wait, uh, and also, how did he know? How, why did he know that? He's a scientist. Because he's so a medical mastermind. Uh, and Maybe also, gave it to her. Uh, uh, Cersei's, Cersei's cutting ties hard because she's sending Bronn after. I don't, this seems like, th- that. this was the one part of the episode that I was like weird. That like, hey, Bronn, you know the only two people you've ever, we know Bronn's up for the money. But hey, but literally, if there's anybody that would question your, lo- your loyalty to money, it's these two people. And we're going to send you out of everybody? Well, maybe she's trying to get him in her camp against those people. I mean, uh, we know why she wants to get rid of Tyrion. Yeah. And again, maybe she wants to get rid of Jamie because he's the only other person that knows there's a baby there and that it's his. Yeah. So she can Ooh. eliminate those two people. Yeah. Interesting. That's yeah. If you think about it from a playing the game perspective, but she had her moment at the end of last season to kill Jamie. 
Yeah, but she didn't want to. She mm-hmm. didn't want to do it. Right. Has yeah. she killed someone with her bare hands yet? Like bare, not bare hands. Oh no, but, uh, she, yeah. I, she like oh, never does. Yeah, mountain is the good. Yeah, yeah you get, at the very least, it's going to be the mountain or somebody like yeah, that. I yeah, I can't. I don't think so. Yeah, which so is we, actually kind of surprising. Yeah, right. Yeah, she's responsible for oh so much. Yeah, so, much. so many deaths. So many more. At least deaths. one of them is her kid. Lots of the deaths. She's indirectly responsible for the death of her other son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Props to yeah. Um, yeah and speaking of Euron, we Theon gets an actually cool moment that I was like I. I don't I am very in team not for Theon or mm-hmm. Reek or whatever. Not a fan. I know he's on a redemption or whatever. Glad Yar got him a gotta pop him one because he or twice. Did he get yeah. punched twice in the face or just no, once? just the one. Just the one side thing. And, uh, I, that was a moment that I actually didn't really buy so much in this episode. That she's forgiving him or No, that he just marches in there, slaughters all these people and saves her. Well, this is his people slaughter all the people. His he, yeah. his, his I don't know. I was like, is she dreaming this? Because <laughs> I, I didn't buy that that's how that would go down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's how it went down. So, okay. And you got your, you got your taste of violence with that axe buried way deep into that dude's face. Mm-hmm. And he just... Well, that's yeah. what I mean. But I think they were showing that was his axe and he was responsible for... Mm. Uh, that was the one guy he got. The rest were his men. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my thinking. I did like that what the show if, was what like... What if he like, passed the axe like... And yeah, he goes, he's, ah, I did it. <laughs> yeah, you know I tried to pull it out, and it's like a little stuck. It's like, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's about <laughs> yeah. the end. I, uh, uh, I did like, you know, because we're homaging the earlier seasons. I did like that we got a little, little more violence, and we got one of the brothel scenes. Like, hey, remember when we did this? Because it's not going to happen the rest of the season. But hey, we're, we're winding things down. So here's a, because uh, that. It, the the sex scene was like distracting with like oh that's that's been a long time since the show has invested in one of these. It was a good joke though. I liked it. Like yeah. they kept talking about dragons. Like can you stop talking about yeah. dragons? Yeah, it was like get burned. the yeah. saddest, unsexiest sex scene yeah. in the show. Maybe yeah. thanks Game of Thrones. <laughs> that's where we were really good at that. I like felt bad for Bron. I was like, how much is he paying for this? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Um, and I did want to point out uh, people already caught this online, but Rob McElhenney, uh, who the co-creator and star of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, is the guy who. Gets the arrow through the eye mm-hmm. when Theon does his big rescue for Yara. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I like good for him. I like the subtle uh, Easter eggs where like cast members or famous people can make their way into the properties that they like. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Um, and the tease at the end, we have Jamie showing up in Winterfell and Bran being the branniest Bran we've had for mm-hmm. ever. He yeah. uh, he's a you think he's gonna cool out? You think he's gonna get into nah. like squash or something yeah. so he can start talking about something else? Because right now I want to. I just want him to be happy. And he's not going to no, be he's happy. Not gonna be. He's, he's basically Dr. Manhattan at this point. He's so, he's so, because he didn't finish his Three-Eyed Raven training. Mm-hmm. He's everywhere at once. And so there's really, he's he's almost never really there whenever you're talking to him. Because he's yeah. ever, literally every other place simultaneously. Because why else? He's seen he, too much. Yeah, he's basically sitting out in that courtyard for the entire episode. Because he, he knows Jamie's going to get there. But because he's so scattered, he doesn't really know when. So he's just kind of like. Chilling. <laughs> I just uh, I Watching interpreted people. when he said waiting for an old friend. At at first, I thought he meant Sam, so he could have that conversation with Sam. Yeah. And then when Jamie showed up, it was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, kill two birds with one uh, stone. Yeah. But yeah. ending the episode with Bran and Jamie, just like in season one, season episode one. one. No. Yes. And yeah. Bran gets to kick him this time. <laughs> um, yeah. We. But the the highlight of the episode is. Uh, I, for me, it's Sam's uh, confronting John and yeah. finally telling him this truth. Also, it's like I did like that they equated like Sam's more of a brother than Bran is. That's why he yeah. has to do it. Brother also, the Watch too. also, I might not listen to when Bran starts talking. It's like when someone's like too much of a fan of something, and you're like, oh, <laughs> okay, like sir. you let the information wash over you a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was fascinating how uh, John's reaction wasn't like, oh man, so I'm getting down with my aunt. His reaction was. She'll never be okay with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's I can't treason. I can't take the throne from her. This is treason. I'm waiting for it to sink in that like, oh wait, yeah, I've been boning my aunt. I, honestly, I don't think the show's gonna touch on that. I really don't. Really? I think the show, I think it's just gonna no, I really I really you think yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, no, Targaryens see, do each other. No, we know I this. know, but that's the thing. That's the thing is, I think I, I, I don't think the show is going to really unpack that because I think they want us rooting for. And I read two separate reviews that were like, I just can't invest in the Danny John relationship because incest. And I don't have that problem. Have you seen the show I, before? I, but, but I'm so. I think they've done a good job building their chemistry. I thought the their interaction at the waterfall was a little heavy handed. 
Uh, it was a little too lovey I, for the show. I would agree with that. But um, the dragon was funny though. Yeah, I just I wouldn't surprise. Staring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, just watching them. Because you know that dragon's like, I know you're a Targaryen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I he knows. knows. You wouldn't have ridden if you weren't. Mm -hmm. But I do hope. Going back briefly to when um, Danny was telling Sam, like, whoops, not only did I kill your dad who you didn't like, but also your brother who you definitely did like. Um, and uh, I'm hoping... That was the moment of this episode for me, yeah. by the way. Because uh, the actor who plays Sam yeah, sold it. You're yeah. so good. He went on a full, like, uh, like great. Like, uh, my new queen's telling me I'm rad. Oh, she killed my dad. Well, I, I didn't like my dad that much anyway. She killed my brother. Wait, now, okay, now, hold on. I'm going to have to unpack this. But... Um, I liked, I'm hoping it makes Danny a little less snotty because she's been a, like, like, listen, if your sister doesn't listen to me, like, well, dial it back a little bit. Like maybe, this, mean, is a, uh, maybe this is a post, uh, White Walker conversation to be had. No, that's, I, I'll yeah. give you that. That maybe now isn't the time yeah. because you know, they're coming, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, they're coming. We see what, what the ramifications of the, what they're doing right now on their way to Winterfell. But, uh, I, I kind of buy it enough that like Danny's just kind of like, taking care of business at this point. Yeah. Like she's she's burned like just like royalty from multiple cities mm -hmm. on like a different continent. She's and like, like I had it a hasn't way been a big, things. big yeah. thing. Well, yeah. And, and that's the that's why I argue that uh you know how we talk about villains kind of having a redemption arc in the series, we see our greatest heroes go a little to the dark side. Yeah. And Daenerys, we have been not only hinting at that, they've been, you know, putting that in our face for a while that is she turning into the mad Targaryen regent that we know of the past. Yeah. And I think the Tarly situation is another situation like that. And I agree with you. Hopefully this will help her kind of put it in perspective yeah, a little bit more little and bit. tone it back. But I think John is right to be terrified of what will Daenerys do with this information yeah. mm -hmm. if I tell her this information because she is going a little power hungry, a little murder insane. She has yeah. been for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something that everyone needs to be aware of. There you go. Yep. Uh, I also, it, if you guys should always watch like the, you guys, I mean, I'm sure you guys do, the post credit, like the post like breakdown of like from the creators of the show yeah. talking about their characters. Because I love the description of John putting up every wall he can to not have to accept the information that yeah. Sam's telling him where he's yeah. like, my dad lied to me. He's like, he didn't he actually, he was, again, Ned's great. <laughs> Ned was yeah. really, like Ned was really good. Yeah. Like yeah. he made you feel like a son and he did it the best that he could yeah. with the information. Because if anyone found out, you would be dead. Yeah. You would have died. And like you actually have a better life now because of him. He and lied to his best friend yeah. for years for you. The for only you. argument I would make is he should have told Catelyn. He should have Catelyn, listen, don't tell anybody else, but you need to know. I this. agree. Because that would have that would have uh, disarmed a lot of bad situations later. I agree. <laughs> hey, but hey, but hey, you, Ned's noble to a fault, we know this. Mm -hmm. But talking about like compartmentalizing stuff and maybe waiting until uh, the White Walkers get here. Uh, they they be here because yeah. <laughs> uh, because oh, really the, poor, quick. the little oh sorry I just want to say the opening graphics was great and I love oh yeah the, the, the new intro the new intro, intro was intro. really the good the new intro was on fire yeah, yeah. it was amazing with the broken wall mm -hmm. and then the crypts underneath Winterfell and, and the, King's Landing and the tease with um, um the last hearth and that's where oh. we go. last hearth yeah hearth, sorry, last yeah. hearth yeah because we the little boy at the beginning you know the second that little boy shows up we're like oh he's he's dead meat I thought he'd be okay oh yeah <laughs> not, and, I mean not that dead yeah and then so we we. <laughs> the people that literally there was almost impossible for them to survive what happened on the wall. They did survive the wall. They did. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> they jumped out of the way. I guess. Yeah. Yes, um, we're supposed to buy that. And they run into Dolores Ed, who we haven't seen in <laughs> like, what, three What seasons? up, Dolores? I called it. He was coming around the corner and I was like, it's Dolores Ed. Money's uh, on nice. it. One of my favorite jokes. His eyes are blue. My eyes have always been blue. <laughs> uh, and they see, I think one of the creepiest things they've done in the show with the kid and the arms. So we've seen that type of thing from the whites before. But not pinned to a wall with limbs. No, yeah. well, but we've seen it done with body parts in the snow. Yeah. If you remember, yeah. we've seen that a couple times. And those are the same, uh, the same symbols from the Children of the Forest that we saw in the Dragon Glass Cave. Yeah. yeah, like we've seen these symbols time and time again. So what does that mean that the White Walkers keep leaving these Children of the Forest symbols? I was kind of hoping, and I might have brought this up when we we're talking about season seven. I was kind of hoping. I thought the episode Beyond the Wall would have been a good time to be like, actually, they're leaving these symbols to try and break the magic on the wall because I've always wondered what were the White Walkers doing? They were they waiting around for the dragon? Like, what have they been doing this whole time? We so never know. If they were leaving, if they were leaving like sigils to break the magic or whatever, that would have at least explained the plan yeah whatever but it was cool i like the, the it was 
the kid screaming with the fire like this is oh, a nightmare this no. is a nightmare what's it, happening I right thought now. Tormund was so dead yeah. I was like yeah. turn around you are so dead right now it would be now. such a bummer for him to die that way but yeah no the just it's such a horror movie move but just the eyes opening oh on my the wall because uh, I blinked and all of a sudden I was like oh my god yeah. mm. I straight up took my book I was taking notes in and did this because yeah. I couldn't watch I so uh, Ma did the same it. thing <laughs> <laughs> so do we want to give this bad boy a rating mm-hmm. and I did want to I have a question for you guys really Ooh. quick moving before we get to that, but just really quick, is that the first time we ever heard White Walker make a sound? Because I thought they didn't make any sounds. Oh, when he's been, screaming! He's but... screaming pretty, uh, pretty aggressively, and I feel like they haven't really talked at all. Interesting. Uh, I, I am getting correspondence fair, from off screen that yes, we have heard that before. The oh, the yeah. white, oh, yeah, the white zombie scream. noises. Yeah, because the White Walkers are the ones, the blue dudes that turn the dead into blue, white. Blue dudes in a bad mood, yeah. for sure. Yeah, they're they, not like Blue Man Group. They are not fun. They, they are not. Funny. But they could have a musical side to them that we'll just never be able to explore. <laughs> <which is laughs> Until bummer. they take over. Until yeah. they take over. They do a lot of synchronized movement. They, they, do. Do. they do. They like art. <laughs> so yes, with that, out of uh, ten kids pinned to the wall, what yeah. would you give it? Oh, <laughs> uh, I give it up for me. I'd give it a B plus. So what is that? Eight point five dead kids on the wall. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that, I hate. Uh, this hold on. I need my conversion. <laughs> no, uh, no. Out of mm, then we'll change it to. Ten brands staring in a courtyard, what would you give it? I would give it nine brands staring in a courtyard no. um, because I feel like, like I said earlier, filling in the characters with the information that the audience already knows propels the action forward and sets us up really well for this season. Yeah. Uh, and then for me, ten elephants not appearing on this episode, <laughs> I would give it a solid nine out of ten elephants not yeah. appearing. They gotta show up. They gotta. I don't know. I thought that was a big, like, sorry fans. Yeah. I know you want this, but budget. Yeah, we are still a TV show. We might be the most expensive TV show on the <laughs> network, but just wait. I think all of us, when we were doing a watch along, we were like, well, then you gotta give us Ghost Riding a Dragon. You gotta, <laughs> give, us elephants. You gotta give us Ghost Riding a Dragon. Do you guys want that? You guys gotta let us know in the comments down below. But before we do that, we have a little clip from our Patreon segment where we answer your questions from the Discord. Let's take a look. Seven seasons learning intimately about these characters. And there are so many pairings and different kind of like um, people meeting and other people that we haven't, like have, they haven't been in the same room for seven seasons. Yeah. You know, they're joining back up again. And it's, it's it's kind of like a reunion and it's wonderful while still moving forward. You can check that out. Uh, $15 plus tier on our Patreon. You get so much more. You get live streams. You get early access to other content. You get high five if we ever see you. We're going to answer promise. your questions. We're going to interact with you more on those segments. So please be a part of that with us because we're going to have a guest. The plan is we're going to have a guest each week. Ooh. Support there should be these a lot talented of boys. Please. You, please. That's please. how we're able to make more content for you. But yes, make sure you subscribe to Might Be Awesome for more content. Check out the Only Stupid Answers podcast and follow Trisha everywhere that matters. Oh, thanks. You can do that at that GRL Trish. So it's like that girl Trish, but with no I in the girl. There you there go. go. At DJ Talks Trash for me. At Sam Basher everywhere that matters. At Might Be Social, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, you can check out Only Stupid Answers uh, YouTube channel and the podcast. They got a lot of cool stuff. OnlyStupidAnswers.com for everything else. Gang, check out, click on the stuff on the video right now, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>